Hello, today in English Literature with Susan, I like to talk about E. Cummings' poem, Anyone Lived in a Pretty How Town. Um, e. Cummings is a modernist figure. He at first um, uh, in his poetry classes was introduced to metaphysical poetry and the Pre-Raphaelite poets. Uh, like Dante Gabriel Rossetti, and, and he followed them in, in terms of uh, the, the pattern of his intricate stanzas, and um, he, he wanted a kind of a structure uh, which deviated from the traditional structure of poetry, exactly like what John Donne had, had did in his own time. Anyway, um, E. Cummings, um, may, maybe he was under some of the modern trends and influences like formalism. So the form of the poem, uh, especially how the poem appears on the pages or the typographical image of the poem is also important to him. So um, his poetry, uh, uh, you know, regardless of how it is being read aloud, has has an identity when it is written over the paper as well. So, by by using the spaces, by by using uh, or juxtaposing the words uh, with a with a distance or a space or things like that, he also conveys meaning. So, um, he, he uses uh, the, the the format or these capabilities to to write a modern form of poem, like many other modernists. Therefore, like T. S. Eliot, like Ezra Pound. He was in a process of apprenticeship, of deviating from um, uh, from the traditional conventional forms of poetry. But this doesn't mean that he deviated from all of them. But 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 anyway, uh, he most of the time instead of uh, rejecting uh, the themes or. I don't know, uh, let, let's say uh, the, the, the traditional themes or subject matters of poetry, he preferred to change uh, uh, how the poem appeared over the page. So so as a result of all these, his poetry is not maybe as difficult, as elusive, as an elusive, of course, as T.S. Eliot's or Ezra Pound's poem, poems, but, but it, it makes some time to, to comprehend his poetry because of the form he had, he had chosen. For example, he, um, he rejected capitalization, he rejected, uh, for example, of the first word or the proper names, especially his own proper name as as you can see, or um, he rejected to uh, to entitle a, a title for his poem, so his poems didn't have a title, and by way of convention, <laughs> maybe uh, totally against his wish, uh, the the publishers uh, considered his first line of the poem as the title, so that we can distinguish the poems from one another. And um, another way that his poetry is uh, different from the poetry of other modernists, though he was an avant-garde figure, is, is that his poetry is about people, real people, ordinary people. He, he likes his poetry to be available, though linguistically the poems are not available, but they are from the subject matter. Lovers, loners, people who don't have a place in a capitalist system. Are, are are appearing more and more in his poetry and he read his poetry aloud to other people so so it seems that he wanted to communicate to contact the people with his own way and it is very interesting that he had chosen love uh, as a subject matter of his poems or the human relationships he thought that in a consumerist capitalist society other people cannot, uh, some people cannot come into terms with the rules uh, of such such a way of living and therefore they, they felt lonely. And he addressed those people in many of his poems. So let us go and read Anyone Lived in a, in a Pretty How Town. Anyone um, here has double meanings. Uh, it, it can be anyone or, or someone, let's say, or it can be no one, and the, 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 no, no person at all. So it can be a character named anyone, or it can be generally a reference to a human being. Anyway, so, so have this double type of meaning in mind while we are reading the poem. Anyone? <clears throat> I'm sorry, lived in a pretty how town. And the subject uh, and the title seems a little bit difficult to understand. It means that someone who lived in a pretty town, so how town, 
um, it means that the, 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 the questionable, maybe the shaky condition of living. So, but by adding a, an, a kind of a question word here, he's questioning maybe the prettiness of the town or the ways of living um, or the standards of living in that town. Anyone lived in a pretty how town with up so floating many bells down. Uh, the bells are a reference to the church, and uh, from the very beginning, it refers to birth and death, in which, in, in, in both occasions, we can hear the bells of a church. Uh, so, with up so floating many bells down, so this in this town we hear many bells, it means that uh, life is ongoing in this poem. And by, by not putting a subject, a, a title for his poems, maybe uh, not proper conclusions, he, he opens up the ways of poems to all of us, like this one. Anyone lived in a pretty house, and it can be anyone, with up so floating many bells down. So, life, uh, life has a float in, in this town. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. And we have the passage of the seasonal uh, cycles, and in this time in the poem, they appear, you know, in their proper order: spring, summer, autumn, winter. It it means the passage of time. So time was passing; people were living. We could hear the bells of the churches. He sang. He is anyone. He sang. His didn't. He danced. His did. So uh, th this is how he was living. That he he sang something, singing about his. Um, failures maybe and had danced his success or that that, that people that life has its own ebbs and flaws sometimes you are successful sometimes you fail women and men both little and small little in terms of uh of their age and small in terms of maybe the appearance cared for anyone not at all anyone can be anyone or a specific person again they sow their isn't, they reaped their same. So this is the result. If, if uh, actually you plant nothing, you will have nothing in the end. Uh, you will reap nothing. Sun, moon, stars, rain. This time, by reference to the celestial objects and uh, uh, the air condition, he also refers uh, to the passage of time. Days and uh, days and nights are coming and going, and sometimes we experience rain. Sometimes uh, we have uh, soft weather. Uh, 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 so, so sun, uh, day, moon, night stars and a cloudless kind of maybe condition uh, a sunny maybe day and rain a cloudy rainy type of weather condition so uh we have passage of day and night and also uh the, the changes uh, of the weather all of these referring to, to, a, to a pattern of temporality the time is passing Children guessed, but only a few, and down they forgot as up they grew. Autumn, winter, spring, summer. Okay, children, when they are when they are still um, so young, uh, they are more sensitive to the people. They they show more emotions and they care. But as time passes, as autumn, winter, spring, summer come and go, they also grow and they, they become grown-ups and they don't care any anymore about anyone or the passage of time or something. They, they are also part of the routine of life now. And children guessed, okay, so let alone uh, this prophetic part, children guessed autumn, uh, that no one loved him more by more so when they were children and more sentimental more sharp in their emotions they could uh, they could detect that no one as a woman has feeling for anyone so that no one loved him more by more so no one is now in love with anyone when by now and tree by leaf so when by now, okay, and when time was passing at the present and tree by a leaf, when the trees had leaf, uh, and it, and you see, um, he talks about time and he, he talks about nature in his poetry. So nature is also an important element when you read a poem by E. Cummings, tree by leaf. She laughed his dream, maybe it was a spring. She laughed his joy. She cried his grief. Now anyone has no one. 
uh, okay, this this seems to be very ironical that anyone has no one to laugh with him and to cry with him. Uh, but anyway, uh, she laughed his joy, she cried his grief, buried by snow. Maybe time is passing again, buried by snow instead of the leaf by the tree. And still, by still, sometimes uh, we have motion, motionlessness and sometimes di dynamism. So anyone's any was all to her. So anyone, though anyone had anything, but that anything was no one's everything. So <laughs> I know that these sentences are getting more and more creepy, uh, but this is how, how he's trying to tell us. Instead of anyone, instead of anyone he could use somebody or someone, but, but he's showing also the emptiness, the shallowness, the hollow within um, each of us uh, members of the human society. Someone married their everyone's. So someone's married their everyone. So people get married, laugh their cryings and did their dance. So many people experience a married life, sleep, wake, hope, and then they said their nevers, they slept their dreams. So this is the condition of marriage. They sleep, are awake, hope, and then they said their nevers, they slept their dreams. Uh, so, so again, uh, uh, different aspects of a living, not every time happy, not every time sad, that the kind of passage of time and how the passage of time changes the, uh, the flow of living. Stars, rain, sun, moon. This time he starts with weather and then we have the passage of the days and nights. And only the snow can begin to explain how children are apt to forget to remember, to forget to remember, uh, with up so floating many bells down. The children are also, um, now when they grow up, they don't care about the floating many bells, that many people are, are dying, that many people um, are coming to this life. So the children don't care anymore when they, when they grow up. one day and that church bell is is this time addressing anyone one day anyone died i guess and no one stooped to kiss his face uh this sentence is very sad as you imagine that a woman is kissing her husband her beloved for the last time or no one really literally no one was there to kiss him Busy folk buried them side by side, and no one, after stooping to kiss him, maybe she died too. The busy folk buried them side by side, little by little, and was by was, as time is passing, little by little. And you can see um, th th there is a, um, a kind of reflection in this line, little by little, is as if this part is reflecting the other part, and was by was, another reflection, because both of them are now dead, was and was. So we have two people dead, and that's why we have repetitions here, little by little, no one, anyone, and was by was again, anyone and no one. The, the, the words are mirroring one another, like the husband and the wife, all by all and deep by deep. This uh, pattern continues all by all and deep by deep. And more by more, they dream they're asleep. No one and anyone, earth by, by April. Earth by April um, means that uh, they, they, they grow once again from the soil. Uh, that they sprout out, that they are very bloom in bloom. Uh, uh, they, they, they are now turned into grass, into plants, into flowers. No one and anyone earth by April. And now they are part of the beauty of nature. Uh, and this is a very romantic, beautiful cy cycle. Wish by spirit and if by yes. So they, they are now spirits wish by spirit. And if by yes, so yes, they are turned into flowers. So they, they have a maybe very beautiful ending together. And this is how this poem ends. I hope you have enjoyed uh, reading this poem. And I wish to see you in my next video. 